Hey, if you're an AI agency still selling chatbot implementations and automation workflows, then you're about to go obsolete. And I mean that literally. By the end of 2026, when a client asks, can you build us an AI solution? And your answer involves zap your flows, make scenarios, and it in workflows, chat GPT wrappers, or custom GPTs, they will find someone else. Because here's what happened in 2024, 2025. There's a silent chatbot graveyard right now thousands of AI automations that worked beautifully in demos and died quietly in production. Not because the technology failed, because you shipped actions without ownership. No memory of what happened last week, no identity proving who did what, no audit trail when the CFO asks why, and no improvement loop making it smarter, no proof layer showing results. Every conversation reset to zero. Every deployment was a one-time demo. Every client eventually asked, why doesn't it remember anything? Why can't we improve it? Why can't we scale it? Why can't we own it? There was no answer. And that's unfortunately why it died. Now, let me show you what's actually coming and why most agencies are not prepared for it. By the way, if you're new to my channel, my name is Imtiaz. I'm not new to Enterprise AI. I've spent countless years in the trenches building production AI systems for large organizations where reliability, auditability, permissions, and compliance actually matter. I've been the bridge between business teams who are looking for solutions and the development team who are delivering the result. And over the last two years, I've built and run AI agency operations, including CRM system, voice agents, automation, data pipelines, the full stack. Now, this is what I saw on both sides. The technology works, the models work, the workflow works, but the missing piece is architecture. It doesn't work. And what I'm about to show you is the architectural shift that explains why most agent systems are dying and what actually is going to survive 2026 and beyond. Now, here's what's going to be different 2026 versus the old way 2023, 2025, right? So this is the old way. And we're going to see prompts and better instructions. They're going to go to systems and architecture that works. They're going to evolve into that. We're going to see those standard FAQ chatbots or those bots. They're going to evolve to workers or persistent employees. So what that means, they will continuously compound intelligence and get better over time. So we need something that can be that reliable and the business can actually use, right? And those tools that execute tasks, they're just going to turn into infrastructure for the digital workforce, kind of like a factory floor. So if you're still wiring these automations and all these kind of stuff, all these things are going to be outsourced uh, like pretty soon, right? So there's no value in learning that. The next step for you is trying to now build infrastructure to manage these um, workflows. Now, if you're still selling 2023 solutions to 2026 problems, then this is your wake up call. Now, let me talk about what actually killed most AI agent projects. It wasn't about technology. According to Google Cloud's 2026 AI agent trends report, 46% of organizations cite integration with existing systems uh, as their primary challenge, not model capability. The models work, Cloud works, ChatGPT works, Gemini works. The problem, my friend, is the architecture. Most AI automations died because they were built like this. Trigger LM action, done, right? It's a one-time thing, hit it and quit it and forget about it, right? But, but here's what it was missing, right? Did it have ownership? It died because it can't remember context. It can't prove who did what. Can't explain the decisions. Can't get smarter. Can't measure results. And rarely survived in 2024, 2025 and thus ended up in the chatbot graveyard because these things cannot work in production because the LM hallucinates, API rate limit hits, CFO asks why did it make that decision, client asks can it remember what we discussed last month, how do we know how to uh, version control these agents, how can we um, take accountability if something goes wrong, none of those questions could be answered and it's tough. So you end up having nothing. So the crazy thing is most AI agencies are still building it this way. Zapier, OpenAI, Google Sheets, and calling it agentic AI. But that's not digital workforce. Uh, that's workflow automation from 2023. Here's what the Forrester's 2026 prediction report says. In 2026, enterprise applications will move beyond the traditional role of enabling employees with digital tools 
to accommodating a digital workforce of AI agents. Read that again. Not tools, not automation, not chatbots. Digital workforce. That's the shift happening in 2026. And if you're still building workflow automation, you're building for 2023. So to break it down more clearly, this is going to be the main driver for the 2026 shift where identity becomes non-negotiable. According to Digital Bricks 2026 report, companies will assign each agent a unique digital identity through corporate identity system. Microsoft is already doing this through Enter ID, giving every agent an enterprise identity so every action is tracked and attributable. This means if an AI agent accesses a database or sends an email, it does so under a specific ID with preset permissions. And that means you have a clear audit trail, not that the AI did something, but agent ID 4251 accessed customer records at 2.47 p.m. under sales manager's permission. That's the difference between a chatbot and a digital employee. Next up, memory is going to become the moat. AWS just released Agent Core with long-term memory capabilities. The system extracts meaningful information, consolidates it over time, and maintains a immutable audit trail. Here's the key insight from the documentation. When humans interact, we don't just remember exact conversations. We extract a meaning, identify patterns, and build understanding over time. That's what real agents do in 2026. They don't just respond, they remember, consolidate, and improve. So your agent from January should be smarter in June, not reset in every conversation. And this is the most important thing I don't think a lot of AI gurus are talking about, which is skills. And skills are going to become portable IP. Hey, by the way, if you're running an agency and there's one automation that you have rebuilt more than once, whether it's onboarding, reactivation, reporting, content posting, that workflow should not still be a fragile flow. It should be a reusable worker asset that you can install across your clients, upgrade over time, and actually own. So over the last year, me and my team have been developing something that you're going to love. We are opening up beta installs where we're going to convert one real automation into a portable digital asset with memory, version, skill, and auditability. And if you're curious and would like to explore how that would look in your tech stack, I'm going to leave a link in the description, so check us out. And think about it. You design a customer service agent's behavior patterns, you define its decision-making logic, you build its skill library, you train its memory infrastructure. That's intellectual property, not Zapier flow, not a make scenario, a portable version, auditable digital worker that you own. Here, here's what makes it valuable. If a client switches from Claude to GPT, the worker still functions. If they change CRMs, the worker adapts. If they want to export and run it themselves, they can. That's not vendor lock-in, that's worker IP, that's portable, that's something you can own, something you can defend in the court of law. So the real product, not AI agents, but what actually sells is digital employees. 57% of organizations already deploy multi-step agent workflows, but a real digital employee has four critical layers identity, who it is, what it can touch, what it cannot touch, who owns it, what permission does it have. Then you have memory, long-term context outside of ChatGPT, Claude, temporal knowledge graphs that grow smarter. If you want to dive deeper into temporal knowledge graphs and long-term memory and some of the current challenges with it, I made a video so you can actually watch it out and see how I'm building my own knowledge graphs. And then you're going to get a lot of ideas yourself. That's production memory, not session memory. All right. The skills that we discussed in the earlier slide is versioned, reviewable, upgradable, written as markdown, not brittle visual flows or a JSON file. It's portable across models. It's auditable uh, decision logic. This is where the IP lives. And then you need proof. Logs showing what what. Metrics showing how it performed. Evaluation showing where it improved. Rollback showing you can undo mistakes. According to Valium 2026 Enterprise Agent Builder Report, the winning platform provides end-to-end -end observability, RBAC, audit trails, and environment separation that meets enterprise compliance standards. That's the product, not a chatbot, not an automation, a digital employee with identity, memory, skills, and proof. 
All right, now let me talk about the seven mistakes that's killing most AI agent businesses. Number one is shipping autonomy before control. So give API access before permission boundaries. A lot of startups love this because autonomy is really powerful, but you also have to consider uh, the permission boundaries and safety protocols that are, are going to be important uh, to make it production ready. Second is no explainability. So when the CFO asks, why did it send the email who owns this agent? Uh, okay, when the CFO asks, why did it send the email? Who owns this agent? Uh, who is accountable for this? Uh, all these questions you cannot answer. So that becomes a big problem and that leads to um, production failures. No permission boundaries. Assistant can't access everything. Security incidents waiting to happen. No memory strategy. Every conversation resets. The agent can't learn. It can't improve. It's permanently stuck or frozen. Then you have no evaluation loop. You don't know if it's getting better or worse over time. You're flying blind. Number six, workflow builder dependency. You're locked into Make, Zapier, and when they change pricing or features, you're stuck. All you're left with is a JSON template, which is just basically a schema diagram telling you how the tools are mapped, you know, not necessarily an IP that you can use. And lastly, lock in fear with no portability. Your client asks, what if we want to move to a different platform? And you say you can't. Every failed agent startup hit at least one of these three. And you probably heard about a lot of these cases where startups went bankrupt because they were just locked into a platform and the platform went bankrupt and um, their data was gone with them, right? So that's the last thing you want to happen to your business. Now, very few smart agencies are building something completely different. They're going absolutely the other direction. Maybe they're not public about it. This is what they're doing behind the scenes. They are developing persistent workers, not automations, persistent workers, portable skill IP, client isolated memory, explainable decisions, upgradable intelligence right so this is the architecture they're building behind the scenes not session chatbots workers that persist not vendor lock flows not shared context not black boxes full audit trails not static rules compounding capability and all this leads to leverage defensibility and workforce architecture so an example would be a customer service digital employee it's going to have an identity layer a memory layer, a skills layer, and a proof layer, okay? Now to wrap this up in one simple mental model so you can take home with this and think about this, uh, let it marinate because this is going to be very helpful for you going into 2026. Uh, so you can use this model to uh, start building proper architecture. The old model, we automate tasks. 5K a month for 10 automations, charge hourly to build, revenue caps at billable hours, no compounding value. This was the old model, right? It worked in the past and it's no longer going to work in 2026. In 2026, we designed digital workforce, okay? You charge for the worker design and then you have a monthly rate for your employee. Just like employees are billed by their work, you can um, have your agents go to work and get paid for it. Charge for deployment, revenue scales with fleet size, compounding intelligence. Now you might be asking why this is premium because you're not selling labor replacement, you're selling owned intelligence that compounds. Every interaction makes their system smarter. Every customer teaches the worker new patterns. Every quarter performance improves without your intervention. That's a moat. And that's why enterprises will pay 10x for these outcomes. But having said all this, by the end of 2026, this is what we're gonna see. Small business will expect installed AI employees. We need a digital employee for customer service that will sound as normal as we need a CRM, all right? Agencies will compete on worker IP, not we use Claude, we use ChatGPT, but our customer service worker has 2,000 hours of training data versus theirs has 200. Automation chatbots will sound like fax machines. It will be the marker of someone who didn't make the transition. Oh, you still build chatbots or you still build automations. We use digital employees. Now, the biggest mode uh, is going to be memory, identity, and skill design. I'm going to reiterate this one more time. So please pay attention. It's not prompts, not models, not tools, 
not automations, the companies that own persistent memory architecture, worker identity systems, portable certs. As a digital workforce designer, you don't need to learn coding. You don't need to know automations. You just need to design worker behavior patterns, define skill libraries, architect decision logic, train memory systems, deliver to clients. Okay. So think about how the employee is going to learn, adapt, and grow over time. And this is how you're going to own the worker IP and build compounding intelligence. So the money is definitely moving towards agentic AI uh, 2026 and beyond. So we'll see a lot of enterprise software apps. We'll also include agentic AI. Day-to-day -day work decisions will be made by agentic AI. All right. And there's also going to be a significant shakeout expected before mainstream adoption. We so we expect to see this throughout 2026. So we already experienced phase one, uh, the chatbot and automation rush, which was still a pretty good payout for AI agencies. Um, and then in 2025, we're going to see the consolidation and agent washing. We're seeing a lot of this uh, at this moment. We're seeing um, the boring, reliable automations that are working. We're seeing what is actually agentic, what is actually not. People are starting to wake up to these differences. Phase three, this is where the fun begins. This is when the real AI agents survive. 2027 is the workforce layer emergence. We're seeing MCPs, we're seeing uh, native apps uh, that are uh, discoverable with ChatGPT. Claude is now also starting to build their app store. So a lot of people are going to rush and start to build these things that connect natively to LM systems. And while it's happening, the skill layer is going to evolve so it becomes uh, better in terms of storing your blueprints, your DNA, uh, rather than putting it into uh, like a vendor locked system, like a JSON file, which is actually just tool schemas. So you actually can own the skill file or your IP and version control it, grow it, evolve it. Uh, obviously you need good architecture behind the scenes to help you uh, store the memory and learn and build compounding intelligence. So enterprise will also start catching up. They'll shift their budgets to accommodate the digital workforce. And then you're going to see a lot of uh, big corporations, big enterprises uh, opening up their wallet for these kind of systems because they have all the components needed to become reliable. In 2028 and beyond, we're going to see embedded agentic software, right? So don't worry about this now, but we're going to see a lot of that later and uh, but 2026 is the year of the digital workforce i hope you found this video useful as you can see 2026 is not going to be about better prompts it's not going to be about which model you picked and it's definitely not going to be about who stacked the most automations it's going to be about who owns portable worker assets agencies that turn their repeat workflows into reusable workers will compound agencies that keep wiring fragile flows will cap out and if you're an agency and there's one automation that you've built more than once whether it's onboarding reactivation reporting content schedule that content should not remain a fragile flow it should become a reusable worker asset that you can install across your clients upgrade over time and actually own so we're building something special for you guys. We're opening up beta installs where we convert one real automation into portable digital workers with memory, version skills, and auditability inside your own stack. Now, if you want to see what that looks like, if you're curious, I'm going to leave a link in the description so you can sign up for the beta install. Now, it's going to be the smarter way to run your agency quietly, practically, for leverage. If this video gave you a new perspective or a new way to think about agents, then give this video a like, subscribe, share with your friends, and follow us in the journey to 2026 and beyond. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.